James Madison uh, has has lost only three games. No team in the tournament has lost fewer. They've won 31. Uh, the question is, how strong was, was that schedule? And in the eyes of the selection committee, clearly it wasn't very strong because if the Dukes had not won the Sun Belt Conference tournament, they would have been the first team ever not to receive an at-large bid with more than 28 Division I wins. Uh, so the Dukes clearly, with a number 12 seed, had to win that Sun Belt automatic bid, and they did emphatically in the, um, in the final against Arkansas State. Uh, Mark Byington's team is the only club in the country with two separate winning streaks of at least 10 games, Started the season 14-0, now on a 13-game binge that is the longest active streak in the country. Uh, so if nothing else, Michael, I think the Badgers are going to encounter a pretty confident bunch tomorrow night in Brooklyn. Yeah, and, uh, you know, the, the one thing that Wisconsin coach Greg Gard keeps saying about JMU is uh, they're very old, um, very oh. experienced team. And, uh, you know, so, you know, that that's always, that's always a scary first-round matchup when you go up and against a group of seniors that tends to be, you know, the groups that come together and make sort of those Cinderella runs, those guys that have had that experience and those, you know, winner go home games and they don't want their careers to end. So, uh, yeah, I mean, when I, when I saw the matchup with JMU, I didn't, I didn't think that was a good draw for Wisconsin at all. I mean, you know, mind not that, you know, the next round would be Duke potentially. And then <laughs> after that would be Houston. I mean, it just didn't seem like it was a good, uh, good portion of the bracket for Wisconsin to be in and, you know, it starts with JMU, JMU, you know, I remember them from the start of the year with that I'm beating Michigan state. And uh, yeah, it didn't, it didn't look like uh, that was a great way to start off, you know, a pretty important March for Wisconsin, you know, that hasn't been to the second weekend of the tournament in seven years. So. Yes, they beat Michigan state in the opener. Izzo hadn't lost a non-conference game at home in, in forever. But since then, they haven't seen anything approaching what they're going to see Friday night. And, and I, I just get the feeling that the first eight to ten minutes are going to be paramount for, for James Madison. That They're going to need to, to get accustomed very quickly to the upgrade in competition and athleticism on the other side of the floor. Yeah, and, you know, Another note, yeah, the the team that JMU beat at the beginning of the year, Michigan State, obviously, you know, you could catch anybody off guard in the first game of the season, I think. Um, but at the same time, uh, Wisconsin is, you know, they swept the season series, I believe. It was first time in a while. I'm not going to say a year because I don't know if off the top of my head, and I don't want to be wrong, but uh, they swept the season series against Michigan State for the first time in, you know, I believe over a decade. Um, and, uh, uh you know, they won both those games pretty handily. So uh, Wisconsin at its best, uh, you know, you see by the seeding and, you know, you see by the record as well. Uh, you know, they they have the ability to be a good deal better than I think the Michigan State team that JMU ran into in the be beginning of the year. But, you know, it, it just depends on what Wisconsin shows up. You know, I, I wouldn't trust Wisconsin against anybody in February. You know, they lost, uh, <laughs> they lost two in a row on the road to uh, – to Michigan and Rutgers, two of the, you know, two of the worst teams in the Big Ten uh, this year. And uh, that was part of a four-game losing streak. They ended up losing six of eight in February, which is their worst February in 23 years. Oh. Uh, it was, uh, yeah, it, it was as far as a team that was once the number six team in the country, they went about as far down as you could possibly go uh, in the sense of late tournament seating because of that February. And Having been in NCAA tournament arenas where double-digit seeds are attempting to upset single-digit seeds, the longer this goes, that it's close, the more confidence the underdog gets, the tighter the favorite gets, and the more the building turns. Like e even the neutral fans in the seats will start sensing it and they'll be on their feet for the double-digit seats. And then it's on. 